Hey guys, um, so it's Andrew here, everybody, as you can tell. Uh, so the last book review I did, I wrote it down, and that took roughly an hour. So I decided I'd mix it up a little bit and do this one through video cues, because I figured this might be a little bit faster. That said, the last book review I did two days after deciding to do the book review, and this one I waited three weeks. But, you know, that's how it goes. So, today I'm going to be talking about this book, which is The Last Olympian, from the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. It is the fifth of the series, so I'm just going to go through really quickly a little bit of the series. The story is, revolves around Percy Jackson, who is a per who's just a normal kid when he starts out. You know, he has ADHD, can't really focus, but uh, through strange events keep happening, keeps getting kicked out of school, but as time goes on, he figures out and finds out that he is actually a demigod, um, the half-blood son of Poseidon. Now, this one is the last in the series, and it's basically, the whole series is his fight against, uh, specifically Kronos, but also Luke, who was, in the beginning, his friend, but throughout the series ends up becoming the main embodiment of Kronos. Now, this is the last of the of a five-set series, and so it, I'm going to do some comparisons to, say, Harry Potter's um, Deathly Hallows, Mockingjay, Allegiant. So, with this one specifically, the one problem I have with the three that I mentioned, those series, is, is when you get to the last book, all you really want is the fight. You want to see the main characters and the villains come to a head to, you know, fight. And the problem I have with all three of those book series, you know, Deathly Hollows and Mockingjay, is that when you get to the final book, it's 600 pages of them avoiding the fight. Or being forced to not allow to fight, you know, and, it, and then they cram a fight into the very end. So, the one nice thing I have to say about this book is that the majority of the episode, of the book, of the story is actually a war and is actually fighting and is actually you know uh two forces coming together which is a really nice change but there's also the negative of that in that it's a lot of fights that are kind of pointless so at the beginning of this book he's um spent su all summer with this new girl who can sort of see the future it's not clear at the beginning of the book, but it becomes clearer as the series goes on, that, you know, and, but he also knows that Kronos is coming, and that there is a fight coming. So he preps, so he and another member of the Camp of half -Blood, the other, another demigod, go and fight, go to Luke's ship and decide they're going to blow it up, you know, they're going to take, take him out before he can get to New York and basically get caught, find out that there's someone in the camp that is betraying them, and giving away information, and the other camp kid from the camp sacrifices himself to get Percy out, and they blow up the ship. It's, it's an interesting thing to do, but it's kind of pointless, because we don't know who that character is, and they try to make him out to be important. And his death is important to the story, but we don't care because we've never met him. I don't remember him from any of the other books. So, Luke is still coming. They didn't stop him. They didn't even slow him down. And all the gods are off fighting one of the titans, basically, who is Typhoonus, I think is the name. Who is just basically a giant walking typhoon. And causing nothing but chaos and destruction from the west coast heading towards the east coast while Kronos in the body of Luke is going through New York to stop him and only pe only people to stand up against them are a handful of kids from the Half-Blood camp like most of them end up showing up as the time goes on but basically it's all about getting more people to join getting everyone safe and one of the things that Percy does to help rally the troops and help make it so he can actually win, because there is a prophecy that he is either going to save or destroy the world. 
and he wants to help make certain that he can save the world so what he does is he befriends the son of Hayes and they go into the underworld and he takes a dip in the river Styx much like Achilles did in Greek mythology now that is if you know the story of Achilles that's the reason why he dies is because he gets struck in his heel which is the one point in the river of six that his body did not submerge in this version it's just it's wherever you t keep the tether for your humanity that keeps you from um sinking into the water for perseus or for percy sorry. for percy he puts he, he puts it in the square of his back because he's like oh i'll wear armor i'll be protected there i don't need to worry about it and that kind of works. It also kind of gets his main love interest stabbed. Because she su subconsciously knows that's where he put it. And one of the villains goes to stab him there. And she blocks the way and gets injured. Now, I don't want to give away too much more of the series. It is a really good long fight. And it's really interesting. And it's compelling. And there is a twist in the end. And I really enjoy the twist, and it's it's a really complete and solid send-off for the series. I don't have any real negatives on this book, other than, well, it's a little... Some of the fights are just completely ridiculous and random. There is a point where they spend a, a chunk of the story fighting a flying pig. And it's like, this pig is... And they make they hype this pig up. It's like this pig has never been defeated in battle. This pig has never, and it's like really, uh, okay, yeah. And it's like it's like having read the books and having known they made movies. There is no way they are going to make this fifth movie. I already know that it's not happening. However, even if they did, they would trim out some of these fights. A lot of these fights are really kind of stupid. I mean, there's, they basically awaken all the statues to fight on their behalf, and it's just, it's really weird. But there are positives to the, to the series. One of the things I really like is the title of the book is The Last Olympian, and The Last Olympian refers to Hestia, the goddess of the hearth. Now, Hestia is not a god that's super well known in, unless you study mythology, and even then there's not much known about her because, quite frankly, she doesn't do much of anything. She is one of the first, the original six gods, one of the ones born from Rhea and Kronos. So she is literally on par with Hades, Zeus, um, Poseidon, Hera, and Demeter. But she gets no respect and no love because, again, she doesn't do anything. She is the goddess of the fire of the house. But it, they play upon her really interestingly in this book. And in this book, she is depicted as a child character and that and she chooses to stay out of fire out of fights because she has to protect the fires of Olympus. She has to keep the light for their home. So she is the only Olympian left at at the modern Olympus, which is the Empire States building in this series, which is just weird. But it's the way they do it, you know. And she talks to Percy and tells him, you know, what his fate is, what he needs to do, and she really guides him, and it's a really interesting interpretation that she's kind of this all-knowing, peaceful being, but gives you the courage and the strength to fight, which I, great, I thought that was a really interesting interpretation. You know, it's just for a boring character. Um... Everything that's good in the previous books in this series is very good in this book. It's very strong. It's well written. It's got good characters. It's got good interactions between the characters. It has interesting fights and interesting villains. I don't have really too much else to say about this. I do like the fact... I actually... This is one where I really like the fact that they didn't just say, Oh, no. Nope, series is done. Nope. We're done. Mm -mm. He kind of left it open. And in fact, he basically said, Yeah, I'm writing more. And other books where that happens, I'm just like, oh, God, please, I just want this series to be done. But this series I really like, and I would like to see more adventures of Percy and Annabeth and all of their friends. So, 
I'm, I'm really tempted to see what... I'm really... That's like, I have that book. It's one of the ones I'm going to read in the next two or three years, probably. I have no idea when I'll get to it, but I'll get to it when I can. Um, that's all the review I have for this one. I will post another one. I will be posting another one very shortly, probably today, later today. And if you guys like these videos, let me know. I will try and do some more. If you want me to go back to the written form, I'm glad. I'm happy to do that as well. This is just something else I want to try, make it a little more interesting for the group. Um, so I'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful day, and I will hope to see you all in the bayou really soon.